In today's video, I'm gonna break down the potential residential eviction ban and tell you the consequences on the market. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Siberia 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtor on Realty Inc. Quickly uh, subscribe, comment, like, and all that. Uh, but today I'm gonna go through the residential eviction ban that was proposed today that can be forthcoming uh, in the coming days by the Ford government. This was announced as part of a series of restrictions and limitations in response to the growing rates and the further lockdown of Ontario at large. And obviously if this residential eviction ban were to come, it would apply to, on to Toronto GTA, but Ontario at large as well. Now, I don't play favoritism in terms of landlords or tenants. Uh, you can watch all the videos I made on this channel. I've worked with tenants, I've worked with landlords. I can I talk about landlord red flags, I talk about tenant red flags, uh, tenant rights, landlord rights, all that. So my analysis here is purely from an objective standpoint, at least as objective as I can be. Anyways, let's get on to the analysis. If a residential eviction ban were to be introduced, what would be the consequence? Well, in short, I see two main points of consequence here. Consequence number one, this is gonna cause a lot of investors who are selling the property in terms of uh, whether it's a condo or semi-detached or detached property, it's gonna cause a lot of listings to come on the market in which they ask the buyer, the potential buyer, to carry on the burden of assuming the tenant. This has already been the case, believe it or not, during the pandemic period. Now more than ever, I'm seeing listings on the market where they clearly state that the buyer has no choice but to assume the tenant. And even myself, I sold the property about a month ago where I was on the selling side to so the landlord side and we asked the buyer to assume the tenant and the buyer assumed the tenant. And clearly this is not always related to a eviction ban or the fact that the tenant's a bad tenant. Sometimes it's a very good tenant. It's just, you know, they can't move at that point in time. They're paying rent, but they can't move. Nonetheless, uh, this is gonna cause that trend to increase. I was just on MLS today while looking at listings. I saw three out of the seven listings that was interested for my client uh, asking as such, and I'm gonna venture to say that with this eviction ban, if it were to come into effect for a month, two months, you're gonna see more listings wherein investors are now selling their property, asking other potential investors to assume the tenant. Number two, this is gonna limit to whatever extent we don't know yet, but it's gonna limit the number of new listings for rent coming onto the market. Because believe it or not, the turnover for listings have been high in terms of the rental side of things. This is mainly due to the fact that the Airbnb reg regulations have come into place. Now landlords have to shift towards long-term uh, rental options, also with combination of the fact that a lot of tenants are actually leveraging rental offers against each other because rates are falling. So they're actually leaving their current place to for a cheaper place. But another reason was eviction. And now if evictions were to be banned for a temporary period, those listings will not come onto the market anymore, which in a way is actually good for the market because the market is oversaturated as it is anyways. There's not enough demand. That's why in the first place, tenants can afford to look around and shop around. As a result, this can actually be okay in the short term for all landlords. Now, obviously for that specific case where the landlord has to evict because they don't have cash flow, that's a different story. But if we limit a source of the influx of the rental market, one of them is eviction for a short amount of time, that actually can stabilize the rental market in theory a bit. That's Sam from Sabri 6 Real Estate. Tell me what you think in the comments or get in touch via Gmail or Instagram or my office. Subscribe, comment, and like this video. Your support is always appreciated. Stay in touch and stay safe. Thank you.